Hey blockers, Jeremiah here. Quick update video. Uh, last I left you off, we were getting everything taken out, taken down anyways, and getting stuffed into a new tent, um, and then getting air moved across those cards. Um, so I, I'll give you a quick update on that. I'll take you downstairs, show you how far it's come along. Thanks. Okay, here's the finished product. Um, I've got the six inch inlet now coming from outside. There's the fan, it's blowing across the cards, getting sucked out by this eight inch exhaust fan, pushed up into the ventilation. I took the old shelf out and just got all my boxes organized. Um, still a dungeon down here, but it's working out. It's a 107 year old house. I am a uh, busy dude, so it's about time I got around to it. You can see we're doing okay on temps. It's unseasonably warm out and I've still got them on last night's settings. The fan speed is matched. Um, one of the things I noticed if, if I'm turning, so this is my eight inch fan control and I'm running separate controls right now just so I can play around with air mixtures. But if I have the, the eight inch fan on full speed exhausting out that way, um, and I don't have this bottom vent open, I will actually pull the tent into a vacuum. And for some reason, and I've always done it this way, I've always been told to do it this way, but that starts overheating the cards. They start picking up temp like you wouldn't believe. Um, I think it's because when, you know, you did that little experiment. Uh, well, I don't know if you ever did, but we had a science museum when I used to live in Tucson, Arizona, and you would put a feather and a bowling ball in a vacuum and drop them. They both hit the ground at the same time because in a vacuum, there's not a ton of wind resistance. So the closer I pull this tent into vacuum, um, the more I think that heat just wants to go wherever it wants to go. There's not a, a constant airflow. So I opened up the, uh, you probably can't see it, but I opened up this vent right here just to equalize the pressure and it made an insane difference. There's the air wall hooked up. It's less of a wall effect because I enjoyed being able to actually get into this tent and do rig maintenance this way. If I would have moved it, the shelving about halfway into the tent, I would still have that wall effect, but they basically lined up perfectly. I pulled out that cross tube right there um, and aimed it so it was blowing into those fans and, and uh, getting the air directly to the cards. But that's been working awesome. I've been you know, as you can see, I'm pulling 90 plus degree heat into the house. Uh, the furnace has been off all day and it's staying 68, 69 degrees in there. Um, let me see if I can get in here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not too zoomed in. There's the six inch inlet splitting to fours running down either side of the wall. Um, I'm happy with the way this is set up at the moment. This will work. Uh, we'll try it out in the summer. If I have to move the shelf halfway in and get that wall effect, great. If uh, if I end up changing these crossbars and just running, you know, straight inlets into the fan too, we'll see how that goes. Um, I can really increase the airflow in here though if I turn up both fans, and I might actually run two six-inch uh, inlets into the tent, um, and that'll match the CFM of the eight-inch on the way out and then I'll probably run that to the other side. But this is it up and running. I'm really happy with the card temps. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, some of the things I've learned, don't put the tent in a vacuum. Instantly the cards start getting hot. Um, oops, sorry about that. And uh, just allowing a little ventilation is great. But what I don't wanna do is be sucking out the AC in the summertime. So I think I need to match the air coming in versus the air going out. Um, and even, even on the on the cold side when it's in the 80s uh, you wouldn't know it on the cards they're they're getting that fresh outside air um, i'm always telling you guys the temp outside and it seems to fluctuate you know depending on what time of day i, I check into it but it's going to be mid 30s all week so i'll really get a chance to screw around with the the air blends and, and things like that and then eventually i'll just run one controller um, once i've kind of got got it all figured out how much air I need to be pushing in versus taking out. And then um, if, if I can get that figured out, I will be able to just seal this thing up and not pull any air out, but it doesn't matter right now. 
any air out of the house. Doesn't matter at the moment though, because I'm just warming it. So um, yeah, this is this is it. It's working working really awesome, and I think this is the way to go. I'll tinker with it, refine it, and um, start getting warmer days here, and figure out how to maximize the cooling uh, when the time comes. So all right, we'll uh, head upstairs. I'll show you some numbers. There it is. Hear that noise? Anytime. Anytime I tilt my phone. What the hell is that? Only does it upstairs. Anyways, here's the numbers. I hope you guys can tolerate that noise. I'm going to try to hold my phone still. Here we go. Uh, temps. Let's get these opened up a little bit better. This is the office. 580s. They're all looking good. 60s. That's where I like to keep them. They're helping with the heat, so I don't, I don't mess with those too much. I just let them run hot. Uh, now the 1660s. This is um, this is the warmest they usually run, but these are the only ones that are not getting direct air from outside. If you notice the two temperature probes, I have there was one in the 90s and then one in the 80s, about eight degrees lower. That is not actually measuring the air from the air wall. That's measuring the uh, the dead space behind the wall. So theoretically, that's what these guys are getting. So they're getting, you know, 83 to 85 degree Fahrenheit air and still running at that temp. So I'm, it was kind of an experiment just to see what it was going to be like in the summer. Um, cause I don't think I'll be getting the tent any colder than 85 degrees. I think it's warm and humid here in the summer. Vegas, they're doing great. These are my two liquid cooled. Um, and then these are the 64s that have been flashed 56. These are the 256s. And then my 30 series cards are doing just fine. Everything's good here. And mind you, this is me sort of stifling the airflow to maximize the heat getting pumped into the house. And it's been good. It's warm. There's that damn sound again. What in the hell? Anyway, so as the as we start getting warmer temps out, yeah, see right there, it's 37 out. Um, that's warmer than it ought to be in Wisconsin in February. Uh, and then I've had fluctuating temps, so I can't really run the greatest tests. Um, some nights it's 4 below, 14 in the day, 26 the next day. So um, the, all this week it's going to be mid-30s. And that'll give me a chance to, damn it, damn that noise. Um, all this week it'll be in the mid-30s, so I'll be able to really kind of dial in what I want each fan to be doing. And then I think I'll just make one of them kind of control the, one of the controllers control all the heat in the tent uh, once I figure out what's suitable. And so then once I've got that going, we'll see how how it wants to play along when temperatures start getting warmer in the 50s, 60s, stuff like that. So I'll really get to kind of mess around in the tent and hopefully optimize by summertime. So it should be an adventure. If you guys want to stick around. Oh, hey, there I am. Hey, it's me. So stick around. I'll, I'll keep you guys filled in and we'll try some stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for this one. Thanks. All right, so here's what I've gathered. Contrary to common conception, um, in an environment where you want fans to blow air across, be it heat exchangers or the, the fans themselves that are moving the air across the cards, um, you want to stay as far away from vacuum as possible. Um, you know, you see a, a lot of people want to have negative pressure in their tent, and maybe to some extent you can have some, uh, but through my experimentation, uh, a heavy walls caving in negative pressure environment only lowers airflow. I actually uh, remember now seeing an experiment done on this where a guy had a fan inside of a box with a bunch of foam beads in it. Um, and he would blow the, blow the beads around and then apply vacuum to the box. And eventually the airflow would get so low that it would no longer even move the beads. Um, so I found that interesting. Don't put your tent in negative pressure. 
uh, at least very little if you have to. Um, if you can match the air uh, coming in as the air coming out, seems to be the way to go. Um, I'm going to do some more experimentation, especially as it heats up. Uh, I think we're going to have probably a second inlet and more air moving across to match the, the fan on the exhaust side. So that's where I'm at for now. Um, this is uh, this is just me taking a journey, and, and hopefully you guys are enjoying what you're seeing. I'm not a big-time farmer. This is just, just me in my basement figuring this stuff out. You know, two years ago, I was a a broke car mechanic living paycheck to paycheck and and now I have several streams of passive income and it's it's been quite the journey crypto has uh, been a big big uh, conduit to that um, so if there's uh, if there's more you want to hear you have any ideas anything you want to comment about the grow tent go ahead and uh, shoot them at me and I will try to uh, make cool compelling videos and, and share my journey I was worried a little bit that I was, you know, not like the big guys out there, the Graham Steffens and things like that. But I think it's, it can be very motivating, but it can be hard to relate to. Um, a lot of guys are, are, you know, trying to start, you know, and it's, it's, it's tough to see a guy with a, a seven figure portfolio uh, and, and relate to that. So um, hopefully this journey, we can go on together. Um, I, I'm, you know, not a big farmer by any means. Uh, 1.7 giga hash. I'm sure that's that might seem huge to a lot of you, but it did to me at, at a, a point in time too. When I was going through my taxes uh, at the beginning of last year, doing my 2020 taxes and, and watching my, you know, $15 and $30 um, deposits onto the exchanges, and then and looking at those and being like, you know, thank you, younger self. It's uh, it's you, you got to start somewhere and starting small is the perfect place to start. So we'll, uh, we'll keep on this journey together. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and, uh, and tag along. I'll be making another video very soon. Thanks. Bye now.